everybody. It's John Reap here. You're about to watch and or listen to episode 22 of Country-ish, and we got another dandy. We play another game of how much is that Screen Actors Guild residual check. Speaking of actors, my buddy Max Deacon zooms in to talk to us. Also, we do a small town news, and we meet the cart narc, and we do a John's journal. It's great. Let me get it for you. Get the country boy, and he's making it good. He was Charles underdog, dressed in beer rolls, living next to the wood. He liked to eat the sushi, but he don't even fish. Not so much a country boy, it's more like he's country ish. Moved out of here green and headed for Southern Cal. Wound up in TV and film, making popsicle proud. Now this country boy is back with his family. Got himself a podcast, he knows it'll last cause he's in Hickory. That's right, baby. I am in Hickory. How you doing? It's where I'm from. I love it here. I'm happy to be back here. I would want no other place to be during a pandemic than right here in Hickory with my loved ones and my friends. How are you doing? My name is John Reap. Thank you for uh, stopping by uh, this episode, this awesome, amazing episode of Country-ish. And uh, we're doing the... During the pandemic, we're not having... A full house. We're basically just doing one guest at a time. So last week it was uh, Sebastian, you know, six foot, 18 inches of twisted steel and sex appeal, the southeastern man of mystery. But this week, no Sebastian. Sitting here at my 237 is a very, very famous man. Well, he's not really famous, his brother's famous. You probably heard of a guy named John Stamos from Full House. Well, I got his little brother in here, Marcus Stamos. How you doing, buddy? What's going on? It's good to see good you. Good to see you coming in off the bench. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, you're, yeah. But, but I know you're ready. Always ready. You're ready to go anytime I need you, and I appreciate that. Nothing else going on. Let's, <laughs> let's do this. Yeah, good to be here, man. Well, you know, we've been uh, we've been hanging out. We're still... We're, we're, we're actually this is the healthiest I've ever been during this damn thing because of my brother. Yeah, we're and we're missing a workout today. Yep, I, I have sacrificed for you guys. I'm supposed to be in my brother's garage doing CrossFit stuff, burpees and and AMRAPs and Cindy's. And whatever. Yeah, <laughs> we're still trying to figure out the code. I don't know the lingo. There's a lingo to it, yeah. and uh, I don't get it. I don't know. Like your brother uses a shorthand talk, and I'm like, yeah, well, and then he looks at us like we're stupid. It's like we're supposed to know it, right? But we don't. But thank you. Um, let me see the hair because it's been a minute. Are you growing it's it getting, out? I mean, I know you can't get it cut. Man, I keep uh, let's get it up there. Oh yeah, dude, you could do a total Kramer from Seinfeld. Yeah, if you wanted to. It's getting up there. Push it like that. Just go like this, yeah. this way. And now, now come up and look at the camera. <laughs> yeah, still looks good though. Thanks. Yeah, you should grow the beard out for real. Well, it grows in patches, so it would take a while for it to fill in. Like yours is yours is pretty, uh, you know, uniform. Like so, if I tried to do that, I'd have holes. Like I'd be missing. Well, you know mangy. what they you know what they call that mange. But, yeah, yeah. Well, that yeah, but they also call they have a name for that kind of beard called the Indian beard. A patchy oh. here, a patchy ah, here. Ah, yeah. Never that's heard what that I one. Got. That's old school. Now and that racist. You, now that you said it, yeah. <laughs> I've heard it. Um, but no, I feel, yeah, I can see there's a little bald spot right there on that side. Let me yeah. see the other side. Got, yeah. Same thing. But I wonder if you grow it long enough, it'll cover up it the bald spot. It would probably fill in. Yeah. But there's a, that's a process. But that's a long this, time yeah, away. You don't want to do that. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, it's good to see you, man. Um, I've been having fun. Uh, thanks for coming back. We're everywhere, by the way. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on Pandora, Google Cast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, YouTube. You name it. We're out there. Uh, if you're new, thanks for stopping by. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Or subscribe, share, rate, review. All right? Um, 
Let me do this real quick. It's been a minute since I've read some iTunes reviews. We got some new reviews, Marcus. Would you like to hear them? Yep, yep. I want to hear them. All right. This one is, I can't, look, I'm not, I'm not always going to be able to, to pronounce the names, the, the, the handles that people use, right? But I think I got this one. Dylan on number 60. I don't know. It says, great, easy listening podcast. Great podcast with down-to-earth hosts. Keep up the good work. Here's another one. Funny and great podcast. It's a great podcast. Oh, Five boy. stars. Here's one by Modern Day, no, by Neil 49er. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting. I wonder if that has to do with uh, with the quarterback who kneeled. It was a 49er. How do you spell it? Would you spell the K or N E I L? N E A L. Neil. That's You're his right. Name. So it's. Yeah. Anyway, modern day John Boy and Billy, he says. Uh, been a fan of John Reaps for years. Great and hilarious conversations. Great musical jingles by the Alan Jackson. You got some props there, buddy. I can't listen to. Thank God I'm a country boy without singing the country-ish version. You won't be disappointed. So look at that. We've got that song stuck in people's head, the Alan Jackson. Isn't that great? Yes, okay. <laughs> He's on the horn today. That's fine. Uh, nonstop laughs. I, I just recently discovered country-ish, but I'm finding myself binge listening. Great group of guys and nonstop fun. Hilarious. Great podcast. John is fantastic, and I love the guy's energy by Rainbow underscore Sally. Thank you all for writing those reviews. It does help. So uh, appreciate you. All right. Let's move on. Let's catch up a little bit. I've been having fun on Twitter. I'm everywhere, too. I'm not just on Facebook, YouTube. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. Is there anything you're not on? Um... Well, I'm, not, I'm not on Grinder anymore. I've had some bad experiences. I don't, no Just way. kidding. <laughs> That's an all gay website. Oh. <laughs> no, I am on Twitter, and I've been having fun trolling a certain uh, uh, Twitter page. Trolling meaning? Well, that means you try to in- start a fight in a uh, weird way. Not, not really. Start. It's just where you just sort of agitate them a little bit. Start shit. So there's Country Living is an actual page, a YouTube. Not a, I'm not a YouTube, but a Twitter page. It's a magazine, I believe. And they're also on uh, Twitter. They're verified. They've got half a million followers. Okay. And I thought, wow, Country-ish podcast should collaborate with country living. Makes sense. You know, yep. we both have the word country in our names, and maybe we could do something together to help each other. Right. Although they'd be helping me more than I'd be helping them. Half a million. And I yeah. reached out to them. I didn't get anything. Nothing, like, not even like a no thank you or a, oh, maybe in the future. Nothing. Well, you know what they get? Dead silence. Trolled. They get trolled. Yep. So, and here's something else that I've been noticing. There's a lot of uh, fake country things out there. Now, I admit that I am country-ish, thus the word ish in the title. I'm not 100% country. I'm country-ish. Kidding me, right? Yeah. No. Oh. You don't think I'm, well, I don't hunt. I don't, you don't fish. You don't run a trout line, trot line? No, I don't. I mean, I only go camping once a year with you guys, and all I do is just hang out. I mean, I don't really, I'm not really, I don't think I'm that country. I don't yeah, dip. You, you don't cook or do anything when we go camping. So <laughs> no. just, you're just kind of there. I just consume. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so would you say I'm a country person? No, you're definitely not. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying not. there's anything wrong with being a country person. You're not a redneck. I don't think I am. No, you're not. But most people think I am. Yeah. Anyway. I'm admitting it, thus the word ish and country ish. Now, country living is not admitting that they're not really that country. Because let me show you some of the posts yeah, they've done. Country living, I see uh, showing. What do you show, think about? They're going to show backwoods things. They're going to show yeah. some people out in the country. Yeah, doing country things. Country things. Hunting, fishing, camping. Yes. NASCAR. Trucks. Trucks. Four wheelers. Guns. Mudding. Yes. Yeah. Honey boo boo. None of that. Very much so, honey you boo. You know what we get? This is one, this is the last one they did. Country Living posted, this yoga flow is crazy good cardio workout. Now let's watch it. Mm. Okay. Nice. Flannel, maybe? No, no flannel, no flannel, just yoga pants, just a yoga top. Now there's nothing wrong with yoga. I, in fact, yoga is a great thing. I should probably do more of it. I need to be more limber. But does this scream country ish to you? <laughs> I mean, country living? No. How many country living people do you know who. Would benefit. I mean, they'd all benefit from it, but it's not really, it's not in their brand. It's not in their wheelhouse. No, I mean. So I just posted up here above it. I just posted, nothing says country living like a little yoga to some techno music. Keep up the word, good work, guys. Yes. 
No, I'm not going to hear anything. They know I'm probably trolling them. That was the one today. Now, Alan, there's another one I did before this. Now, this one I really don't get. If you keep going. Here we go. Country Living posted on uh, April 27th. Monsta X sings James Bay, Beyonce, Five Seconds of Summer in a game of song association. Can we play this one? It's six minutes long. But anyway... Does this scream country living to you? Well, first off, I don't know who the hell Monster X is. It's a We're Korean boy Korean band. Group. So country living, Korea now, technically, style. Technically, Korea is a country. So, you know, if they're going to be exactly right, you know, yeah, yeah. that's their loophole out. And there's nothing wrong with Monster X. I'm not saying they're not good or, or great. I'm just saying it doesn't really fit the brand of country living. living. And I'm just trying to troll them, so I'm having fun doing that. Thank you. We don't have to play that. <laughs> I get it, though. I get exactly Yeah, but do you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. uh, I don't know, like if uh, well, there's a GQ country. put out country living. Well, GQ there's... is Gentleman's Quarterly. That's like the opposite of country living. But I think there's a country living magazine. That, that that, you... That's what they, that's what they're, so, but they're owned by People Magazine or whatever. Yeah, but I've seen country living magazine with actual like houses and like yeah. backwoods type don't get it. Doesn't make sense. Anyway, country living, holler at your boy. I'll call it off. <laughs> call off the dogs. <laughs> until until you reach out to me, I'm going to keep trolling your ass. At least give him a thumbs up or something. Yeah, on, I'm on just going to. Well, honestly, I'm retweeting their stuff, so they're getting another bump from me, even That's though true. I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. Um, also, did my walkie talkies. I'm having fun doing walkie talkies with my Mosa. On Facebook um, today, she did not join me. I don't know if you noticed that because my mother is uh, in Winston Salem getting a pre-op uh, diagnosis from a surgeon. She's about to have cataract surgery and uh, uh, glaucoma surgery. So I, I'm going to assume I didn't get to watch the walkie-talkie today, but I'm assuming you had a lot of people ask where your mom. Oh was. yeah, hundred yeah. percent. She's, she's the star yeah, of, yeah, of walkie-talkie time of that thirty minutes that she do every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, they love her. Yeah, of course. I mean, and you sent her to Winston by herself, huh? No, no. Uh, ah. She she chose for me not to take her. I, I offered. I said, today is the podcast day, but yeah. I, I can call it off. We'll be okay. I can take take you up there. She goes, no, no. They said it's fine. Nothing's happening to her eyes. It's just a meeting. Ah. So she's just going to go up there and come back. Just talking. Yeah. yeah. And it's during the daytime. It's a pretty day. She's She'll be fine. back before it's dark. Yeah. She's, maybe she's already so, back So, you know, thank you for all the well wishes and the prayers and the thoughts she has a surgery coming up, and I know it's going to be. She's going to be a little nervous about it because it's eye surgery. Yeah. You have to keep your eye open while they're doing it. I couldn't imagine, dude. No, anytime so. somebody's messing with your eyes, that's scary. Yeah, um, but hopefully they'll get it done in time to where uh, when they call off the band, where people can go visit nursing homes, she'll be recovered and can actually see him. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the timing might be pretty good. Hope so. But we'll see how that plays out. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. Now, last episode, we uh, we were talking about COVID corona masks. Yeah. And uh, I mentioned, hey, somebody make a country-ish logo corona mask, and I'll be God if somebody didn't do it. No. Yeah. So I want to give a shout-out to this lady, Melissa Hicks Milch. Look at this. She made, designed a country-ish uh, corona mask, and I told him if you make it, you put it on, we'll show it on the podcast. And there it is. I don't know who the guy is, maybe that's just something. Oh, I like that one. one. I like that one better. Half logo, half me. You like the one without me on it. Nah, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I you just like think the right side. Better. Yeah, I like it's cool how they broke it up. Yeah, yeah, they did take you off of half of it. It's pretty nice. <laughs> did you get any of these? Did she send no, you? No, no, she just made, she I, just made she it. She just made the one, but I had other people reach out to me about like making them. Um, but I think it'd be funnier. If somehow you can make the ginger mask, so it looks like the whole mask is a beard. So what you'd have to do with the nose part is just go ahead and draw in a, a regular nose, and then make the rest of it, you know, make a mouth. Yeah. And then just have the beard. Yeah. Just take a picture of my face. Maybe we'll do that, Alan, before I leave. We'll take a high-definition photo of my face, just straight up like this, and then we'll print it out <laughs> and say, go do this. Yeah, make this happen. Right. Yeah, we'll get right on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alan needs something else to do. Yeah. Sure. Now, you weren't here last episode because we were taking turns, you and Sebastian. Right. And um, 
I believe we opened a gift last time, last time and you weren't here. You had one last, I didn't hear anything about it. Was it for me? No, no, no. Um, well, actually, the time before, time we had a gift, but yeah. Sebastian wasn't here to get his, right. which is the Corona Extras. Yep. But he got them. Now you're here. We have a new gift. Okay. Sitting right here. Right here. Do you mean open it? I have no idea what this is, but people are just sending stuff randomly <laughs> to the podcast. I think Alan's okay with it. Are we still good with this, Alan? Okay. Yeah, sure thing. I remember at one point you said maybe call off the dogs, but... Uh, no, no, no. I like, I like <laughs> presents. It's a, presents are good. Yeah, we need to get a P.O. box. Yeah. Maybe. So you want to open this? Yeah, I'll just go it. for it. Yep. I'm going to read the outside go of ahead. it real quick. Ship to the Alan Jackson. <laughs> Country-ish, care of Jackson Creative. Oh, they did good with putting the, lo- the label on here. Yeah, they, they, they get a gold star for their address. Yeah. From Melissa McLean, enabled with the... Oh, okay, I have no idea what this is. You go ahead and open it. But she's from, uh, she's from here? It says Hickory. Hickory? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, my okay. gosh. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff to go through here. here here's the card. I'll show you that. Um, country-ish, fellas... Look at this little sticker on the back. It's a tooth. Can you see that? Ain't that something? Yep. yep. Okay. Let's read the card. Oh, my goodness. This has something to do with teeth, doesn't it? Keep going no matter what. Oh, look at this. I like it already. Okay. It's a lot. Hey, fellas. Hope everyone is staying safe and sane. Wanted to send you cool new brushes because, hey, that's my expertise. Nowhere as cool. Now here as cool as super fan, no, nowhere as cool as super fan Samantha's swag, but hope y'all enjoy this just as much. Hang in there, fellas. Thanks for making us laugh. Okay, let's look at the goodies. Thank you. Look at the little, <laughs> little foam teeth, some molars. Is that a uh, stress reliever maybe? For- yeah. Look at this. We got Listerine Total Care. We got uh, oh. Basic Bites Sugar-Free Soft Chews Chocolate Favor. Oh, look at this. So this is like a little candy. I think yeah. it's a candy. Breakthrough Oral Care Support. I wonder what this is. Oh. It's just sugar-free. For it's dry like mouth or something. No, it's cavities. for dry mouth. Interesting. I wonder if Mouthwash. Do you think I have dry mouth? Oh, we got Colgate. Look at all this stuff. Star Wars. Ooh. Oh. That's yours. Star Wars one. one Minute lounge, uh, Light and Sound. What is it? Oh, it's a toothbrush. It's a Star Wars toothbrush, Alan. Somebody <laughs> gets me. Is there more than one in there, or is that the only oh, one? Oh, you got one, There's too. another one in is here. Is there another one in there? There's some for everybody. There's a bunch of them. There's four Pull of them. Pull all them damn things out. Yeah. Pull everything out, buddy. Look at here. One, two, three, four. Dental floss for everyone. Dental floss. Mouthwash. We got ink pens. Yeah. Right here. Look at this. Yeah, okay. How'd she get all this in this little box? <laughs> Good God. She did it. I like how you job. said box. box. This little box. box. It's like you were bossing all of a sudden. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, this is awesome. Well, cool, thank Melissa. you. Melissa. Who thank is this? You. Yes, Melissa McLean. Thank you very much. Uh, keep on reaping on. And uh, thanks for enjoying the podcast. And thank you for what you do. You're a, uh, I think she's a dental hygienist. Must maybe. be. And uh, I know you, I don't think all the hygienists are getting to work right now, but uh, oh, yeah, thank that's you. That's true. Yeah. Also, I love that she chose purple. That means she also listens because I'm, you know, a purple rain prince mm, guy. Of course, that's all right. this stuff makes sense. Wonderful. Thank you, Melissa. All right, let's move on. Um, guess what happened while you were gone? Where was I at? Oh, you know, my last week. Like I'm just pretending we don't hang out every day anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but do. last week you weren't here. Right, I wasn't Therefore, here. Therefore, you the were gone. Show, yep. But guess what happened? What? Did... I got. Some. Something from oh, you got some Green uh, Actors Guild, dude. Look at we'll that. We get to play that game. I got two envelopes. Okay. From SAG AFTRA. That's the Screen Actors Guild. Right. I'm gonna hand one to you. I'm gonna have one. And I'm willing to just sign it over to you. Thank Whatever you. you open is yours, and you're stuck with it. Okay. Okay. All right. That means it's time to play another round of. Alan! Wait, no, I just say it, don't I? Yeah, yeah, you just say it. Okay, you gonna say it with me? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's time to play another round of How Much Is That Screen Actors Guild Residual Check? All right, there's 
two of them sitting right here. I thought last time we had like a little thing that popped up. There. It'll be later on. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, tomorrow. No, it just happened. <laughs> Friday. Just go with it. Pretend yeah, it happened. It did. All right. All right. So what, what am I... You pick one and but it's you yours. You have to guess and I have to guess yours. Yeah. Suck every time but but since, since it's just me and you in here, yeah. I'm willing to just give you one of these. Wow. What if it's... Uh, I know. That's the beauty that. of the game. It can switch. It can be what I want it to be. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Well, do I you? Mean, I don't know, but you not open. You don't know what it is. I don't. So you're Look, gonna... it's, it's still sealed. I don't know what this is. What if it's 1000 bucks, man? You know, I'm not going to take your money. Why did you? It's the game, okay, dude. Okay, I'll play it. I'm okay with it. I'll give it back to you. I don't know. You mean just There's pick two one? of them there. Just pick one. All see right. what happens. Always go with the right side. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. All right. So you pick that one. I got this one. All right. So you're going to open it, and I'm going to guess how much the check is. Right. I will open this, and I'll read a little bit of info to you. Yeah, that's and right. And you guess the amount. I'm really horrible at this game, too. Not well, good at all at this. everyone's I'm, not I'm all over the board. Because it's, it's all over the map, man. You, you, never, yeah, know you never know what it's going to be. 50 cent, 50,000. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Go well. Let me tell you. Maybe you should have got this one. What's it for? This is for Jane the Virgin. Uh, the one episode I did. Uh, internet rental, electronic sell through, video DVD, and pay television. All one, two, three things lumped into one check. One check. So you, if you get this amount. You can have this one, or you can trade with me, and I'll and I'll do that one. Okay, so I need it'd to be get... like you know, let's make a deal. Ah, huh. okay. So I need to guess the how much that is first. Yeah. Now, did you hear all all that? I did. That's a lot of stuff. Now, what uh, are you thinking in your mind right now? Jane the Verge. I did one episode. Yeah, it's for um, the CW network. I never, I never, I never saw it. Actually, it's for actually the company is CBS Television Studios. That sounds big. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. That's misleading CBS a little bit. Maybe. Studios. Okay, I'm going I'm to throw One episode. I'm going to throw a number out. All right. $17.24. It's very good. Alan, I know you're back there, and I know you're listening. Are you mic'd up? Can you make a guess? Yeah, let me go with uh, $33. I was going to say $34, <clears throat> but I didn't. How do I know that? You would have not. Because <laughs> <laughs> I saw your face light up when he gave you the number. You gave well, it away. You're not a good poker player. Closest person is. is now. Wait. Okay. Do you want to take a chance? Do you think you're closer than Alan? If you do think you're closer, you might want to hang. You might want to take this check. No, no. If you think you're closer, then you would win this. Yeah. If, if you think you're not close, you might want to change. With me. I don't think I am. So I'm going to change. I'm going to let you guess how much is in this one. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to put this one down for now. No, I have to look at it. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm going to. I'm going to tell no, you. No. Wait. What. Wait. 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 I think you're stuck with this one. Think so? I don't know. I'm just going to say the price. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> I am too, Alan. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm making up the rules as I go. Okay. Whoever's closer. I'm going to make an executive decision. Alan won that round. He gets this check. He didn't get it right on, but it's very close. It's forty-two dollars and twelve cents. Okay. He gets thirty-three. Yeah. Closer than you. Seventeen. Yep. All he right. Won. Now he would have won that. Now let's see what your Envelope is, and you are stuck with this. So, Alan and uh, you and Alan's going to guess the price of this. Yeah. One. Okay. Drum roll, please. Let me tell you what it's for. I'm excited. Mm hmm. This is strictly. Open it up more. It's a bill. Oh, so oh. thank you. I don't want that. Do you want to guess how much you owe? No, no, it's not me. It's how much you owe. This is yours. No. <laughs> yeah, that was the game. That was the deal. You knew I that. said. Whatever you open up is you're responsible for. Well, this is yours. How much do you owe? I owe two hundred seventeen dollars and twenty nine cents. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> How much, much do is you that owe? Screen Actors Guild bill for two hundred seventeen dollars. That's my screen. I, I knew that. That's that why was I was funny. having fun with you. Um, How did you know it was a bill? I, because they're 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 shaped differently. Ah, yeah. Um, and I didn't open it. You opened it. You're not going to pay that, This is the Screen Actors Guild. These are the dues you have to pay. And here's your envelope. Make sure you $217.29. Well, 
But look at my total earnings for 2019 at the very top right there. Yeah, you're you're still to the good. Yeah, yeah, you're good. So that's it's worth yeah, paying I, I that. Pay that for yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. You're All good. right, thank you for playing <laughs> Stamos, and thank you for paying this bill. You are a good guy. Seriously, let me hold it. I'll I'll take care of it for you. Thanks, man. You don't get any more checks. It's it's because I hadn't paid the bill. <laughs> Um, all right, well, let's move on. Speaking of Screen Actors Guild, and uh, we, you, we've been doing these Zoom interviews. Excuse me. Oh, we have an actor that's going to be Zooming in. I'm sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> I got some serious What's going on you, Acid man? reflux and gas your happening fast, right now. Your face is red. You're choking on your old saliva. Red, dude. It's always hot. And I'm Anyway, I'm fine. <laughs> um <laughs> Zooming in a guy that I did a movie with, a little movie called Into the Storm. Heard of it, heard of it. And he is a big Screen Actors Guild guy. So let's check out this interview with my pal Max Deacon. And here he is right now, my old pal, my buddy. You know him, you love him. He's been in a lot of stuff. I mean, one of the best disaster films of all time uh, with me. And that's where I met this guy, uh, Into the Storm. I'm talking to the one, the only Max Deacon. How are you, buddy? Oh, mate, all the better for being with you. I wish it was, uh, I wish it was in better time. I wish I could be. I, I told you I was supposed to be there. I was supposed to be by your side in North Carolina. But, uh, but it hasn't happened. It's, That's right. It's conspired against it. I'm not saying this virus has done it deliberately to keep us apart, but you've got to think. <laughs> yeah, I th- there might be something to that, because uh, I was supposed to be in Los Angeles, and you were supposed to be in North Carolina because your wife's family lives in Durham. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. So we were going to go out there. My, my father-in-law... Uh, it's his birthday coming up, so we're going to be there for that. And he's also retiring. He's been he's been uh, he's been working at UNC as a the head of jazz studies there for the past forty years, and he was going to retire. So we wanted to be there to uh, to celebrate him. And unfortunately, yeah. we can't. That's stuck here. Well, that sucks, man. Because um, you know, I, I was telling you earlier, I was supposed to take all these meetings and do some stand up, do a lot of podcasts. Now, Corona, COVID, whatever, it's ruined everything. How's life been for you? in LA now that, uh, I don't know, are you working a lot right now? Are they doing auditions? What's going on? You know, they, you know, I got, I got a, I got a, a single tape in today and it was like, uh, I like printed it out and I held it up like the Holy grail. They're like, there's nothing, there's nothing going on. I mean, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to keep busy. Me and my wife are trying to, you know, do a, a few, um, creative things that, uh, that we've been trying to get done. Like I've been, I'm, I'm on rewrite number 47 on a script I've been writing for about five years and uh and uh, I'm in I'm, 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 you're meeting you're meeting me right now at peak hatred of that script I just <laughs> stare at it every day and just think like oh you're the worst Max what's become <laughs> of you that you're saying it with this terrible yeah well you know we all I mean, hatred I've just thank god for this podcast because I'll be going crazy um I mean creatively I have this but as a stand-up I've not written one joke about corona or anything i feel like i want to wait to see how it plays out before i start writing jokes because it you know it's like it's almost like too soon when it's like happening currently there are people dying and so I, i'm afraid to start writing jokes i'm kind of like i'm going to wait a while you know yeah it, it's it's a it's a super bad time to be in the hot take game about corona <laughs> <laughs> it's worked out. It's worked out. But all I, I feel like all I'm saying is people like, listen, I did not think it was going to be this bad. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I've had the, I've, I've had the, uh, you know, my, I, well, my family in England, they're a little further along with this than we are. So I've been able to call in and go like, hey, is it, uh, it going to get better in like a week, a week time? They're like, oh, no, not at all. But, so I've been able to, uh, you know. Yeah, Use that as my barometer. As we're for, uh, as we're recording this now, I just saw in the news that the prime minister is in ICU right now. That's that's right. Yeah, we, uh, we yeah. That's, I mean, that's 
that's a scary it's crazy scary it, thing. it's when it's starting to hit the uh you know the the powerful people in government you're like oh shit this is legit yeah i mean look i'm i'm sure i'm sure that this is a hacky thing to say but there was an element to which hearing that uh tom hanks got it made everyone go like it's a serious thing now yeah they got they got Hanks. No, we got we we sheltered. I mean, I don't know, but LA sheltered in place as soon as Hanks went down. That's why we needed to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we started, we needed the whole ground. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about how you and I met. We met on the set, well, not the set, but working on the same film together, Into the Storm. Speaking of disasters, uh, not not the movie, but it was a tornado. Um, uh, yeah. We were. <laughs> that's how we. Uh, that's how we were introduced, and um, yeah, and it was. Uh, I had a blast working with you. You were like the funnest guy to hang out with. Me, you, and Kyle, uh, and Alicia, yeah. and, and Sarah, and everybody. Man, we had a really good time. Just hanging out in that hotel, it was like a uh, extended stay type of thing, and uh, yeah, the, what, what do we call it? The Renaissance Inn, we called it. The, res- <laughs> the Renaissance Inn. <laughs> Renaissance. Inn. That's yeah, right. Yeah, it, it was good. And uh, yeah, there was all those sweet people that worked there. That, it, man, that, you know, that was one of the times of my life. I had such fond uh, memories of, of that movie. I mean, for the for the filming experience, but just because. That was a good group, right? Like yeah. Alicia Denham Carey and Nathan Cress and right. you guys. Like all those it's just it's just what a what a um what a good good group of people. Yeah, and I remember I remember think, meeting you and thinking like, Well, this is one of my guys. He just gets me. Yeah. You know, he's he's a comedian and he's laughing at my jokes and I'm twenty five, so I must be you know, I must sort of be his comic equal. And I felt really good about it. And then we um and then I went away for a couple of days. And I, we, I think we'd karaoke, and then I had to fly to get a, a, a work visa done or something like that. And uh, I flew back in, and I saw you in the hallway, right, of the, of the Renaissance Inn, and I saw you down the hallway. And uh, I gave you a wink and a nod, like, there he is, there's my boy, <laughs> my new friend, dif- dif- from different lands, but we just met in the middle, and we were a kindred spirit. And you didn't have a fucking clue who I was. You just sort of... Uh, you gave me a you gave me a half nod. Like yeah, I, like you you thought I you look you looked at me like I was like the, the drug dealer moving down in the you know into the first room in the corridor, and you're like I don't know. Okay, I don't know what I want with this guy. I have to uh, defend myself a little bit, and all of that is true. All of that happened. Um, it was, I think it was because you were gone a while, and I think you had a hat on. You looked different in the hallway, you, and you I were at know. least <laughs> seven, maybe six doors down, so it wasn't like you were right here. You were a little further down, and it was sort of like, a, hey, hey what's, uh, what's going on? And I wa- the Renaissance Inn, if you remember correctly, we weren't in the, the most uh, affluent area. We were out in like... Pontiac or something. I mean, it wasn't yeah, like right. it wasn't Royal Oak, Detroit, a nice place. We were in. There were some shady people walking around outside the hotel from time to time, and I just yeah, remember I'm coming out of my doorway and I see this guy going like, uh, "What's up, buddy?" Like, uh, you kind of give me a nod of like, uh, "Like you need something?" Like, like, like yeah. I really, I really, I, it took me a second to realize it. <laughs> But then it was too late. I was already in my room. You had already went to your room. I guess you thought, like, well, screw this guy. I guess he's kind of an asshole. I guess that's who John we Reap were, is. Yeah, well, I, I just, I never, I, I think I think what upset me or, or why I couldn't understand it is that at 5'9 at, at, um, and sounding how I sound, no one had ever been intimidated by me once in my life. <laughs> so the idea that you would be, <laughs> you would have right. this reaction to me was just, I was like, What's going on here? That's my pal. Were you? Did you happen to be wearing anything? Because I think, wait, you're a big uh, NFL guy. You we we played Mad, right. we played Madden together. Did you happen to have anything That's with right. the Raiders on it? <laughs> I mean, I have a, I have a, I have a bunch of that clobber, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Think <laughs> Maybe that could have been coming off the blade. That could have been some of it, but and you know, the other thing I remember about that 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 moment was that I left just as everyone was getting to know each other. There was all these, like, you guys were going out to bars and stuff like that, and I had to do this thing to, to leave for, I guess I was gone for, like, a week. And then when I came back, and I, and I remember thinking, like, oh, you know, we've only got these two months to make this movie, and all these people are going to be great friends, and I'm going to have missed out. 
And then I got there and you, you know, affirmed all my fears. Like, <laughs> well, look, we got... And you didn't apologize for like, you didn't, didn't you not apologize for like two days? You're like, oh yeah, we in the corridor. I just didn't know. Yeah, because it didn't hit me how it hit you until later on when it, we, 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 we talked about it many times. Yeah. And uh, I go, oh man, I guess that yeah. stuck. I guess that stuck with him and I feel bad, but, um, but we're good yeah, now. Yeah, well, listen, listen. Mate, it, 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 we're, we're nine years later, and I'm still a bit upset about it. So. <laughs> yeah. So let me, let me tell you, you and everyone else watching this, um, you did a fantastic job on that movie. And I, I was not in any scenes with you, so I didn't know what you were doing. You didn't know what me and Kyle were doing. All we knew yeah. is we liked to hang out and have fun. And then I, I remember going to the premiere and sitting in a theater and watching it, and your scene, by the way, spoiler alert, um, your scene where you could have possibly died, almost died, I remember yeah. almost tearing up and be going, and going like, oh, my God, he's, he's fucking good. <laughs> like, like it, 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 it's weird to me because I'm just a dumb comedian. I, I, mean, I took theater. I'm a goofball. I, I'm not like a, a trained guy or anything, but like, but seeing someone that you're having fun with and hanging out with and then seeing them actually be really good. Like, it's weird. Like I'm used to just hanging out with comedians and they just go up there and, and are, are jackasses, but you actually like, there was some no, emotions it, in there, dude. You, you, you guys, are, you guys, are, you guys are the best at that though. And I, I, I had the same experience. I got to watch you guys just kill it and be hilarious. And also, you know, well, so I'd read that script a ton of times. And I knew that most of the stuff you were doing was barely in there. You know, it was you, you, were, you, were, you guys were going off and just um, yeah. improvising stuff. And yeah. that was, it was, that was, that was uh, so fun to see you and Kyle just, uh, yeah. you know what else I remember about watching you and Kyle on set? Do you remember we'd have the EPA, EB, EPK guys, the people who come around and do the interviews with the cast? I remember you and, you and Kyle would sit there and you would answer all the the questions like super professionally you go like you know we've done a little bit of backstory here and then kyle would go nah i don't do any of that <laughs> i know i remember looking at kyle like what are you doing man i mean <laughs> he, he wouldn't just say he wouldn't just say it by himself he'd shit on the stuff you were saying too he'd go yeah. like no we didn't no we didn't say that john he never said that I was trying to lend, I mean, give ourselves a little bit, like people already know I'm a dumb comedian. I want them to think I've actually done something in the acting world. You know, I wanted to make them think that, yeah, I've studied. I, I know all this stuff. I know what's going on. He's like, fuck, we just made it up. Like, oh, By the way, it's the, mo it's the most truthful answer. That's the most truthful. That, 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 you know, that's yeah. basically at the end of the day, that's what, that's what everyone was doing. Yeah, oh, but I had, I had a good time doing that. And um, I also later on, I mean, we had a good time uh, hanging out on the lake. I remember going, um, to, I forgot whose house it was, but we went to a big lake party. And yeah, me, that. you and Jeremy yeah. and Kyle and Alicia and, and Matt Walsh. Yeah. Had a great time, but then you know, movies are over. You move on, and and then here I am. I'm watching TV, and I'm watching the Hatfield and McCoys, and and, and here he That's is right. again, Mr. Deacon, one more time. And I'm like, oh, good. And your 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 accent, like you you're good at covering up the English. Like you have a great American accent. Oh, thank you, mate. Yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You get that's one of the fun things about that's like one of the fun things about being an actor in England. You know, you get. A, you get a lot of chance to be from everywhere else because yeah. we're always making stories that aren't set in England, you know. So if you can do a if you can do a passable American accent, which you know I hope I can, yeah, hundred percent, a lot of opportunities to do that. I remember you telling me too that you got you know you worked with Bill Paxton and um, the late yeah. great Bill Paxton, R.I.P. And he uh, he's got a good Southern sort of Texas accent and. Uh, Maybe you picked up a little bit of his accent. Um, can you tell us a little bit what it was like working with Bill? Oh man, I'm sure. I'm sure I tell because I, I feel like I just finished doing that when I, or you know, I was like maybe a year from that when I when I met you, and um, you know, that was one of the great people I ever I ever got to work with. And you know, when he when he um, passed, it was just a. a uh, a, a real tragedy, and I and I, you know, and I, I really felt like I'd lost a friend, and I think that that's the biggest testament to him. Like, I think there's probably a hundred people, two hundred people that worked with Bill and felt that way. You know, didn't just feel like it was someone they knew, but but someone who who had treated them like a 
you know, yeah. like a friend. And I, you know, when I finished that job, he did a, a little sketch for me. He, he was a great, um, he was a great artist. He'd carry a sketch pad with him all the time. And in his trailer, um, he'd be drinking, you know, after, after the set was finished, he had this, he would, he'd have this homemade Romanian red wine, which is what we filmed apples and McCoy's in Romania. And he'd sketch. And he did, I asked him to do me one. And he did one and he wrote Max Deacon fan club on the back. And it's, um, one of my sort of most cherished, cherished, uh, things. Yeah. I mean, he was just a really yeah. funny, funny and, and big hearted dude. Like on that first day, you know, we we were out in Romania and there was the Hatfields and McCoys and the Hatfields were predominantly American actors, like real actors, you know. <laughs> and they were in they, <laughs> they were in they were in this they were in this um Hilton Hotel, super nice, right? And and the English with the McCoy family, which is Bill Paxton was our dad. And Mayor Whittingham was our mum. Um, we 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 were in the Howard Johnston Hotel, which was also fine, uh, but the ho- like you know, but it was just like a little strange. Like the hotel uh, restaurant was just Benny Hanna, which is incredible. But like every night, you're like, Do you know what, mate? Can I just get the shrimp? I don't need them thrown at me. I just want to make a box <laughs> yeah. so I can eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I was in there, sitting in this hotel, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm getting to see this great Western. This is very strange. And got phone call at like eight in the morning and it was uh and he was and he just you know heard that voice like i need to take my boys to breakfast i'm taking my <laughs> boys out to breakfast and it was paxton you know and we go downstairs and he just you know and you he just be you just sit with him he's like go on mate tell us about fucking apollo 13 and he'd be like oh jesus christ me and hanks we're fucking power you know he was just incredible <laughs> he, just all these um that story uh, wasn't going anywhere. I can't remember what he told me about Hank. No, he, I, I was loving the accent. a million stories. Yeah, I was loving the accent that, that you were doing. He's, you have a good Bill Paxton impression. That's very good. Um, yeah, you know, you know, he, he asked me to do that. But someone, I was doing, I was doing that impression, you know, around because I loved him. And uh, one of the producers came up to me and said, uh, yeah, you know, Bill, uh, Bill, me and Bill are talking. He's like, hey, you know, Bill, when you're not around, this guy just, uh, he just does you. So... He just does it. And Bill was like, okay, so I want to hear it. And I was like, oh, no. And I was like, I don't fucking just do it. Like, I, I, I don't. So I did this impression, and he just went, yeah, that needs work. And, like, wandered <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine. The, um, I had a buddy of mine named Jeff Richards who does impressions, and uh, we started comedy together. And then, I mean, he he did a lot of great impressions. But over time, if you hang out with someone long enough, you'll start picking up the little things that they do. And and he did his impression of me to me, and I was like, "Oh, is that is that what you is that what I?" <laughs> and it, 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 I tell you, it's flattering and it's insulting at the same time, you know, because the yeah. fact that he worked on it and the fact that I sound that way, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, and then here, and you you think like, nah, that's not really me. But everyone else is going like, no, John, yeah. that's oh, it's, is. it's so good. Yeah. Um, well, I I don't know if you noticed, uh, Max, but I um, uh, I'm wearing the things I'm wearing on behalf of you. We met in Detroit. I'm wearing a Detroit Lions hat, and I'm wearing a Phil Collins T-shirt. Because it's the only thing I had in my closet that would represent, uh, you know, the UK or London. I saw Phil Collins in Hyde Park. What? Yes. Performing or just walking? Performing, dude. Oh, it was man. great. I took a whole a London, uh, England trip. I went. To, you, do you remember my uh, friend assistant Shannon? Please, of course. <laughs> yeah. Love so she's a huge Phil Collins fan. And she said, yeah. look, I don't ask for much. Can you? Can we do this trip? You've never been over there. Let's make a whole 10 days out of it. I did all the castles. I went to, uh, I did all of it. And uh, we ended up at Hyde Park and uh, we saw Phil Collins. It was great. So this is all I have. I don't even know if you like Phil Collins, but, you know. It's... Yeah, mate. In the air tonight, you kidding me? Yeah, Please. one of the best. I love it. Yeah. I love it. He's, um, yeah. Well, the best the best uh, commercial from my youth, and you should look this up because you've got time right now. I know you do. Um, <laughs> it is a, Cadbury's, the chocolate bar, released a commercial, which was a gorilla playing the drums to In the Air Tonight. It's a two, it's like a three-minute commercial. Have you ever seen that? Are you in it? I'm, well, no, I'm not in it. It's, oh. just, it's just a commercial I like. <laughs> 
I thought you were saying is what uh, something I did from my childhood. Okay, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No. I got you. No. I got you. It, but it, but it is, it is, it is. I think one of the great works of art that's come out of my country. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I had a blast over yeah. there. I'm actually jealous, man, because I, you know, I don't. I'm not. I'm not trying to shit on America, but I had no. a good time over there. And you guys know how to yeah. drink. Um, we ended up at a lot of pubs. And after we went from Phil Collins, we walked out of Hyde Park and we went to the closest pub we could find. We met some new friends and we go in and everybody is singing together at the top of their lungs, the same song, doing this whole rah, rah, rah thing. And I'm like, they didn't plan this. This just happened. And you know what? That's, that, that's true about England. And like, that's why, um, you know, when people don't understand, uh, when people don't understand, like, the love of uh, soccer over here, right? Right. And why it's so huge. When you go into a soccer game and something happens spontaneously, like, no board tells you to do it, or but, and someone invents a song, uh, and, you know, and then the whole stadium sings at 60,000, 80,000 wow. people. It's the most magical thing, yeah. you know, and, and usually, usually hilarious. Yeah. I, remember, I remember sitting in a, a Chelsea game when I was a kid. I'm going all over the map here, but... Go with me. Uh, <laughs> I was at a, yeah, it was my team. My, my team was uh, Chelsea, and I was sitting with my friend, and we used to, we used to sit right in the corner. And in England, England's small enough that you know, if you the away fans travel, so the fans from Northern England will travel to the game, and they're given a certain section of the stadium, right? And it's always it's only maybe of a sixty of a forty five thousand seat stadium, it's maybe three thousand. But there was this one woman in the Newcastle section, this, this game I went to, um, and she was being so loud and obnoxious that <laughs> she, I mean, she was, the, she was the loudest voice in the stadium. She had control of the whole stadium. Wow. And just every, every terrible thing you can imagine, she was screaming. And then collectively, in a moment of like, just like, like brain melding from like, a se- you know, the whole section nearby, 14,000 people just started screaming at her, you're an ugly bird, you're an ugly <laughs> bird. And it was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Yeah. And she was like, come on, I love it, come on. <laughs> and they, and they had to, she, was, she was such like, uh, uh, you know, she was such a force that the security had to take her out of there, much in the way that the yeah. security had to remove a young John Reed oh. from uh, yes. Carolina Panther Stadium. Yeah, dude, I highly recommend anybody – well, if they ever play sports again, um, you know, try to get kicked out yeah. of a game. It's fun. It's, good. it's fun getting kicked out. You don't get arrested, and you have a memory and a story forever. Um, right, right. Yeah. As, 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 as this lady, as this lady did. Yeah. And I, I, I commend her for making That's everyone awesome, so upset. Dude. She was, she was the best fan in the stadium. <laughs> well, Max, um, one of the things I do on my podcast, you're on country ish, by the way. And I remember you did it being on the, uh, the last pod. I've started and stopped like 17 podcasts, but this one's going to last. Mate, I've, I've listened to, I've listened to over years. Do you remember what was special about the last time we did this though? Of course. What's that? Uh, you're breaking up. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so we, wait, 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 wait. I know we, we, um, I went to your room. We played Madden together. We yeah. recorded a podcast. And what was special to you about that? Well, first of all, spending spending time with my friend John cool, Marie. But the second of all was that we were given uh, a um, we were given a bottle of uh, moonshine from a member of the cast. Do you remember we had a mason jar full of moonshine? Yeah, and. Um, and I listened to that podcast back, and it definitely the wheels fall off at some point. <laughs> wow! Oh, I gotta go find I mean, that. That's funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I forgot. I forgot about that. Yeah. That was um, a good time. Yeah. Well, um, one of the things I've been doing recently is uh, I moved back here not long ago. Uh, my dad had a stroke, so I do this thing on yeah. the show called Popsicle Update. I call my dad Popsicle. And what I'll do is yeah. give people an update because if people are always asking me, how's your dad? How's your dad? How's your dad? So I've been doing that yeah. and I've been uh, zooming in, Skyping with a lot of comedians and people. And I, one of the things I always want to ask him is like your dad. I, I know your dad was like a big, a big uh, hero of your life as well. Can you tell That's us right. some is, yeah. fond memories of your popsicle? Yeah. So my dad is, um, my dad is, uh, 
we call him Edge. That's his nickname, uh, like uh, like the guitarist from YouTube. But no, no, no particular reason. I found out recently it's because when he was younger, he was like kind of a spiky character. He was an actor as well, and um, and uh, he used to have a lot of edge to him. So that <laughs> Eric is his name, but they used to call him uh, Edge. So um, yeah, he's 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 one of my best mates, and I talk to him every single day. And uh, he's he's a uh, quarantining at the moment yeah. in London and, uh, and, and being, being very good. You know, I check in, it's strange being an age now as, uh, as you know, you are too, where you have to call in your parents, like, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't you go outside and get that paper. You stay inside. Right. Um, the whole, you know, so I'm checking in with him every day and, and, uh, and you, you, you would ask me how he was doing. And I said that he, you know, I worry about him cause he's had health stuff over the years, but he's a little bit like, uh, he kind of has his own immunity, I, you know, touch wood, I think, because he, he seems to have, he gets very odd affliction. Like he, he suffered last, the last couple of years, a few times with gout. Oh, which is, no. Um, yeah. Which is what pirates get, basically. <laughs> and so he, yeah. He went, and he, he just said, like, he said, oh, oh, mate, you know, I just had this terrible pain. And I couldn't work out what it was. And I went to this doctor and the doctor sort of had his pen in the mouth of his mouth and looked quite excited as I was describing it. And he sort of flicked through a book and he said, would you, um, would you describe this pain you're having as an exquisite pain? <laughs> and, my, and, my, and I was like, fucking exquisite. Um, well, yeah, I suppose. And he was like, yeah, that's gout. It's going to be gout. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> wow, I would never he, use the word he, exquisite for a pain. Uh, I know. I know. That, your doctor said that, or your dad said that. His doctor, the doctor, said it to my dad. He said, <laughs> "Is it an exquisite pain?" And my dad was like, "Yeah, I guess that's how it feels." <laughs> um, and he, um, so uh, so he's so he's uh, he's had his he's had his battles with all this stuff, but he's he's been really good. He's yeah, saying, uh, that's good. He's, he's sheltering in place. He got engaged this year. Um, oh, congratulations. Was, yeah. Was, we feel really excited about his lovely wife, Juliet, who we love. Um, wow. So yeah, so he's, so he's got a, he's got, he's got a pal at least to uh, hang out with. I hope he's not driving her mad. <laughs> yeah. It, you, what you were saying earlier about trying to parent your parents now, um, I'm going through that too. Like even my, you know, my mother, Sweet lady, she's 72, and you know, she's very, like, you know, susceptible to this coronavirus. And so, hey, of course, yeah. And so, I'm like, Mom, you can't go anywhere. You got to stay here. You can go visit. She can't visit dad, but she can take, right. she can deliver things and drop it off and come right back home. I said, That's all you're allowed to do. And she did that. And I went to like work out at my brother's house and I came back and she's not there. And I'm like, Where are you? And she's like, oh, yeah, so I stopped by the grocery store. I'm at Walmart now. I'm like, what are you doing? You can't go to Walmart. <laughs> and um, it's weird trying to tell your own mother. I, yeah. Be it, careful. You know, that, I feel like maybe, like, I feel like maybe you just said the slogan that they should be using on whatever news channel anybody follows. Instead of, like, it's shelter in place and, like, quarantine like these words they should just say you can't go to walmart <laughs> right i feel like if no one went to walmart corona is yeah. over it's done yeah and say and same for target that's not a discriminatory thing right target same, walmart say, yeah it, big lots they should, they, they should just have a chart and it goes down and it's at 70 it says like you can't go to walmart and then at like 30 it says like you shouldn't <laughs> but okay. <laughs> right, right. You get ten minutes. It's like run yeah. through there, get one thing, get out. But yeah, yeah. man. I, I just, I, 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 I have to say, like, I, you know, the um, there's a, there's a Trader Joe's near me, right? Yeah, and I love Trader Joe's, and they've been doing this. Uh, I'm sure they're doing it. They do it everywhere. Like, the, there's there's lines on the floor outside that are six feet apart, and you queue up, and they let in like. 15 people at a time to the store. But when you get in, it's like, it's like a Disneyland. Like you've, you've queued for two hours, but you're getting, you're like, yeah, it was worth it. It's like the Garden of Eden. You go and you just like all the lettuce and the yeah. produce. It's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. I they're mean, an amazing, they did an amazing job in those places. One of the things I, well, like, you know, people ask me all the time, what do you miss about Los Angeles? And 
I honestly missed a couple of things. Like I missed a couple of friends. I missed yeah. the comedy store. I miss sushi. Um, we yeah. don't have, we got some sushi, but it's not the same. Um, <laughs> but what I don't miss is the fact that it's so crowded and there's a lot of this, get out of my way, get out of my way. But I remember when I lived there, the couple times I stayed for Christmas, how, how it's kind of a ghost town. Like LA around Christmas time, a lot of people leave and go visit their family so yeah. you can actually park anywhere you want. You can you can imagine you go to Trader Joe's and do all that stuff. So it's got to be a little bit like Christmas, but but negative. It, it's got to be weird in L.A. right now. Yeah, it, you know it, it it is like you know you get to you know you get to walk your uh, I walk my little dog a couple of times a day, and it's um you know you see like two people in the streets and they're wearing masks and and that's it. And all the you know, all the parks are closed for a while. You could go up into the parks and do that and have like a little hike, but yeah. They close that all down. So it is It is like that. And if you do need to get somewhere, I had to go get something in West LA last week. And I got over there and, you know, from where I live on the east side, that's a, that's an hour and 15 minutes. I got there in 12 minutes oh. and back, you know. I know I drive fast. It's just, it's just empty. So there is, you know, there is, there is like, there is something of it. That's like maybe this is a kind of a perfected version <laughs> of where we live. Apart from that, there's a virus that's attacking us all. Right, right, that right. bit's not. That bit's not as good. Yeah. I actually talking about sushi and the crowding. My wife and I the other night, we, my, Megan just said, you know, we've cooked so much and we have, and she's an amazing cook, and I've been, we've been enjoying kind of sitting down to dinner. And lunch, you know, twice yeah. a day doing that whole deal. But we just said, like, hey, why don't we go? We'll order out. There's our favorite sushi place is doing happy hour prices. We'll order some sushi. We'll have, we'll eat out. We'll be safe. We'll wipe everything down, whatever. So I was like, sweet, we'll go and do it. And um, I, I got out there, and it was like, uh, it was like a scene from the beginning of The Walking Dead. It just felt like it was people coughing on the glass. <laughs> <laughs> trying, oh, no. trying to grab that they were behind on the meal because every was fr- everyone wanted sushi Friday night and I was just you know suddenly it's like suddenly it's like six feet funny two feet and they still pushing people away trying not to, it was um oh. again they were doing the people who were serving the sushi were doing a great job with keeping it all yeah. clean but just like we're not a great um we're not natural cures you know we don't do well in lines over in LA I don't think no they never have as a lot you know. Uh, a lot of, no. uh, I hate to say it, but a little bit, there's a little bit of rudeness going on. <laughs> there's a little bit of rudeness. But, you there's know, a little bit of rudeness um, once in a while. Dude, I miss you most of all, Max. Oh, mate, I miss you too. I miss you too. We haven't, you know, we didn't, we, we haven't hung out in a little while. And we, but we, whenever we do, we've had such, about three or four years ago, we went to the comedy store together, I remember. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm, I'm not, I, I'm always uh, early to bed. And I remember saying to you about 11.30, ah, oh, you know what? We had a, we'd had a great night, and I thought, I'll call it. And you were like, no, because at 2 a.m., someone really great's coming on. you got to stay. And I remember we saw Ron Funches, just as, as that was, uh, as, as he was sort of on the yeah. up and up. And, yeah. And it was one of, the, one of the best comedy shows I've ever seen at like 2 in the morning at the comedy store. Yeah, and, he, and uh, he, he's, he's gone upward. I mean, he's doing great. And uh, yeah, you. I mean, you do. That's the thing I love about the comedy store. You never know who's going to show up at the last minute and just, you know, at two a.m. It's weird to think that, but yeah, it was amazing. And then and, the, and then the guy in the main room was doing a killer set, and there was only about ten of us in there. We were laughing, and there was a drunk guy. Do you remember this? There was a drunk guy heckling him in the front row. Do you remember this? He threw a chair. And he th- he threw a chair. <laughs> yeah, that's the comedy store I know and love. Hey, it ain't it a it ain't incredible. a good night when somebody throws a chair at the comedy store. Oh, it was incredible. The guy was the guy was being he was being real mean, and the comedian said, uh, "All right, buddy. Well, what do you do?" And he said, uh, "I build ro- roads and schools." And the comedian said, "Well, those are terrible out here." <laughs> and then the guy just threw a chair. <laughs> I love it. I don't remember who the comedian was. It may have been Sam Tripoli, if I, I don't remember who it was. Anyway. He was very cool. He dealt with it very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, listen, anytime, whenever we can travel again, if you're coming to North Carolina, give me a give me like a day or two heads up. 
Um, there's a chance. I play in Raleigh quite a bit. You're going to fly into Raleigh if you're going to Durham to visit the in-laws. So That's right, yeah. And, uh, and I'll do the same if I ever come back to Los Angeles, which I know I will at some point. I know you will. I know you I will. Know, you know, Kyle, Kyle's out here, and I know, he's, he, I know you would want to see that guy. Uh, the, I'll tell you, that's one of the best things that happened from that movie also was me and Kyle becoming real close because uh, I, I didn't really know him before that. And uh, Kyle... You know, he only lived like a, a, a mile from where I live, so it was very easy for us to hang out. And uh, that's one of the guys I miss too about Los Angeles. So if you see Kyle yeah. out there, you tell him I said hey, and, and uh, I will. I need I, I owe him a call too. I got to I got to talk to him. So maybe we'll do that after after we hang up. I'll give him a bell. Sounds good, Max. Thanks so much for doing this, man. Stay safe out there, okay? Oh, mate, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure to talk to you, mate. And love to your uh, love to your mum and to your dad. You got it, brother. Peace. See you, buddy. Bye. Man, I love me some Max Deacon. Hope you're doing well, buddy. All right, moving on. Now, normally, uh, Sebastian does a segment called Small Town News. But since he's not in here, I just kind of took it over. Yeah, that's right? fine. And what I had done was I was looking online. And I found, now I, I'm late to the game. These guys have been doing this a while. But I found something I'd like to share with you. Anyway, Alan, play the music! We're just small town dudes with small town news. Breaking stories of crimes committed you never do. Mind your P's and Q's or they'll cover you. The town may be small, but the news is huge. All righty, this is going to be a hybrid segment because um, it's just something I found funny on Facebook. And it did happen in Texas, a town called Richardson. Texas population about 150,000. Pretty big. It's Pretty not big. that small, but it's Texas. It's country ish. I just went for it because I think it's worth it. Man, there's this guy. It's called Cart Narks. Cart Nark. N A R C. S. Yeah, S. Cart, like Narks. a grocery cart. Yep. Nark, like you're Don't snitching on, on somebody. Yep. yep. And what this dude does. And I, I, I just discovered this today, but he's been doing it a while, apparently. It's for a radio show called The Woody Show. So he does this for that for The Woody Show. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But um, this one happened in 2000, yeah, March 26, 2020. But um, what he does is, this is great, and I feel the same way. Do you, okay, Mark, question. When you go grocery shopping and you get a cart, do you always return it to the cart area? Do you take it in? Do you just leave it next to your car? What do you do? Uh, be 90, honest with 90% me. 90% of the time, I take it back into the store, because I was a bag boy myself okay. back in the day, Right. so I know the I know the uh, struggles of right. getting buggies up. It sucks. So okay. I'll, I'll try to take mine into the store back. Okay. Back. I'm the same way. I don't like it when people just leave it in the parking area. You know, I'll, I'll take it back to, even though I don't want to, because as soon as you put your groceries in your car, you just ready to get the hell out of there. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, My it's, ice cream's melting. Right. It's I don't have walk. time to take it all the way back there, 50 steps. Yeah, you just walk by the cart corral yeah. to your car. You but, don't go to back there. But now I take it back all the time. And, I, and I, in L.A., people hardly ever really? get it. But then their, their argument is, well, there's a guy who's paid to do that. If I take it back, he'll be out of a job. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. That's why they raise the prices. Because right. you got to pay dude to do it. Yeah. You're the anyway. reason why everything's so damn high. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Take your cart back. God. Anyway, I thought we would share this. It's a hilarious bit called Cart Narcs. Uh, Alan, let's just enjoy this video real quick. Hey, Alan, can I turn it up? I know you're going to probably play just the video during this part. Hello. We're dealing with the cart knocks. That's now where the cars go. We got a bumper magnet for you. There you go. Oh, got him. <laughs> yes, sir, that's not where the car goes, sir. Damn. What are you sticking on my car? It's a bumper magnet, sir. It's got our. Uh, Do that again. Number. Why is that, sir? <laughs> Do you need. You have that one. Look at that face. Don't you ever touch my car? What's wrong with your car, sir? <laughs> well, sir, you left your car out where it could touch other people's cars, sir. <laughs> Pardon, me. It's got our phone number on it. You want to fuck with me? No, sir. I want you to call. Then get the hell on. I want you to take your cart back. That's what I want no. you to do. <laughs> why, why do you want me to f myself, sir? 
<laughs> sir, your car is... Get the hell out of my way. Well, I'm not in your way, sir. That car's in okay. somebody's way now. Right? Well, not until you take your car back. <laughs> there you go, sir. Right there. He put it back on his so car. So what's the problem? I'm fixing to kill you. Why would you do that, sir? <laughs> because you ain't worth a piece of shit. I am too, sir. I'll uh, block your tax, you sir. Luckily, I'm a good dodger. No, sir, you take your car your back. <laughs> sir, I'm a cart and arc. Agent Cordell. And I'm a killer. Well, sir, that's not nice. I'm fixing to put about six right in your forehead. Sir, that's against the law. I don't give a damn. What you did is harass me. No, it's not, sir. Yes, it is. That car could harass somebody. <laughs> what are you doing, <laughs> <to> sir? <laughs> Stay away from me. Sir, that car. Will you take your car back where it belongs, sir? Please. 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 <laughs> in the name of Texas, I beg you, sir. In the name of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. This dude's crazy. I'm a nice guy. I'm not an F and A hole. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you don't want this, sir. All right, he takes off. Okay, yeah. Alan, um, you can pause it because then he just starts talking to the guy in the truck that was across from him. Yeah. But I, I love how calm he remains. Yeah. When everybody else gets pissed off that he's confronting them about not taking the cart back. Yeah. He knows how to play into them too. Like, <laughs> I said, he calls he, himself agent, somebody, yeah. agent something. Yeah, and he's got this wand, this orange wand that yeah. lights up. Another episode, of, yeah, another episode <laughs> I saw that actually lights up and uh, <coughs> looks like a little police light. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's funny. And the guy goes, he goes, I, I'm the cart narc, sir. Yeah. And he goes, well, I'm a killer. He goes, that's not nice. <laughs> I'm gonna put six in your head. That's against the law. <laughs> he, he, he does a good job remaining composed. With, in the name uh, of Texas, please. Somebody want to kill him. He stays pretty it, cool. He reminds me of something you'd do. Mm. Just staying calm when someone else is freaking out. Um, no, we should have thought of this. So it's shout funny. out Cart Narc, whoever you are. Uh, mm. I'm into it. Uh, I just discovered him today. Like I said, I'm late to the party, but apparently he's been doing this a while. And uh, if you want to check out his YouTube page, did you play that from YouTube, Alan? Yes, I did. Yeah, it's just Cart Narcs. He's got 21,800 subscribers, and I've got 19,000. So I'm just under him. Yeah. I feel like we could have a good collaboration, Cart Narc. You should get him on here. I would love to. In fact, I did email him. Uh, he can't be on here today, but maybe in the future. Maybe in two weeks. Maybe in a week. <laughs> when you're back. <laughs> when I'm on here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have him come in here. He goes by the name of Sebastian. Really? Which is weird, right? Yeah, well, that would be. That would work out. So we won't. Sean. We don't want two Sebastians. No. I'll have to wait for Please. when you come back. Please. Yeah. Please. Please. Hey, uh, Alan, can we look at another one? Check on the one that says, I'm a fat a hole. Let's watch that one for a second. About how to be civil to your fellow customers. Oh, well, go ahead and rewind yourself. it out. The reason they had the car corral, which we had, by the way, we are right here in the car corral. You could have brought it back, but. Keep an eye on this gentleman. Not seeing. This is the one that has the light up light. Leaving the cart there actually makes it harder for him to open his own door. And he's still doing it. All right. Light him up. Got him up. Hey, uh, <laughs> sir, sir, you left your car right here. That's not how the car goes. Pick it back to the car corral area. Car corral. The cars don't go right there. They go back where the car returns are. There's one over there. See where that guy just came from? Or over there where I just came from over there? I just came from one. I'll show you where it is. This guy's smiling. I'm with the cart narcs. <laughs> And like you're even blocking your own door from opening. You think you'd understand how that could block someone else's door from opening, right? Do you work for that? No, no. We are a highly trained. Secret. That's not our. That's not our siren, by the way. That's an ambulance. Uh, we're a high, highly trained organization. Highly of, trained organization. Of narcs. Narcs. Narcotics like drugs. Uh, hold on. Wait, wait for this ambulance to go by. One moment. Narcotics like mind. drugs. <laughs> Quality siren. Uh, more that's in the. Siren. Common usage of it, like narking someone out, snitching on them. Oh, okay. Like, not you're, narcotics, you're like snitch. essentially, yes. Yeah. So yeah. what we do? Great. So we show people <laughs> the error of their ways, and like that gentleman you know just. What? I get up at three, four this morning. Uh huh. Been working all day nonstop. I think they pay for a guy to do this. Every ah, day. see. Ninety percent of the time, I put it back. Ninety-nine. But you're you're very tired right now, and that's uh, causing an error in your judgment. No, lazy bones. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> lazy, lazy bones. Lazy bones. Here, I got these. Uh, we have these bumper magnets for you. I think they're right fine. Here, he puts a magnet yeah. on the car. Yeah. He flips out. The magnet gets it. Yeah. It's got a hotline number on it, so you can call that for counseling about how not to be a lazy bone. Oh, what's going on? What, what, what are you doing, sir? Why are you approaching me? <laughs> Why am I approaching you? Yes. 
This is yours. Take it back. No, it's got our, it's got our number Take for it you. Back. It's a present for you. Take it back. To teach you how to play lady bones. Take it back. No, sir. You keep that. It's Take it my back. My gift to you. Why are you, Take it back. Why are you running after me? Because you're a fucking asshole. I'm a nice guy, sir. No, you're a fucking <laughs> asshole. Luckily, I have good blocking skills. I blocked your attack. You're, a, you're an asshole. No, I'm a narc. Let me explain. I don't give a shit what you are. Yeah, you do, because you're running after me, trying to throw stuff at me, so clearly... I don't care. What I care about is you. Mm. I have rights. Just leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, I know. And what I'm saying... Leave me alone! I'm having a private, a small... Leave con- me alone! I'm trying to have a polite conversation with you. No, I don't want to polite. Leave! Sir... I'm calling the cops. I'm calling the cops. See, she's... On her! her. Uh, I'm a guy, actually. I'm a man. Call the cops on him. No, I'm, not, <laughs> no, I'm a nice guy. I'm having a polite conversation about how to be civil to your fellow customers. Oh, go fuck yourself. The reason they had the car corral, which we're at, by the way, we are right here at the car corral. You could have brought it back by now. <laughs> over there. You could have put it there. Well, sir, then you would have learned. You are your... this close to being on the ground. Why? I'm, I'm not on the ground at all, Leave sir. Leave me alone. So I don't think you can catch me, number one. Number two. <laughs> you know what? Why? Because I'm a fucking fat asshole? No, sir, because I'm, <laughs> what it is? Because I'm highly trained in running. I, we train for this. We, sometimes we train for this. You know what? Don't get the manager to... Why? Right now, go get us. What for? Because you're bugging me. I'm not bugging you. Come on, let's go. Sir, I don't want to go. go there. I want to have a polite <laughs> conversation and you hopefully... I don't want a polite oh, conversation. I'm calling the cops, okay? That's all, no, you, don't, you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have leave, to. Leave me alone. He didn't take his cart back. He's being very antsy about it. I don't know why. He's trying to... Like, <laughs> because get... you're abusing me. How, I, what, you know what abuse is, sir? I'm having a polite conversation. No, you're not. When somebody says they don't want to talk to you, you turn around and walk away. <laughs> but, sir... <laughs> you that know, but you're following me. No, you, sir, you chased me halfway through the parking lot first. Sir, you left your cart out where it's an obstruction to other customers. That's all we're talking about here, sir. I love that he's shaming the people who do this because that's awesome. Yeah, it's you great tell. Show, call it you really fat. pisses them off nice to be guy, shamed. Yeah. Shame. That's the because they line. know they're being recorded. <laughs> if he didn't have a camera, they would. I think they re- they realize they've done something wrong. I'm gonna get the yeah, well, he's that's going the thing. He, they they, they know did? they. Yeah. Get off his fucking property. Are you gonna tell them what you did with the cart, though, sir? Okay, good. I don't think they're gonna like that. He don't even work there. No, he's a highly trained special agent. Yeah, highly trained. Yeah, they, they train for this. <laughs> I, I, I just said he shouldn't leave his cart right there. All I said... It makes me mad that I didn't think of this idea. Me too. Because I would love right to do this. He, he I'm hoping that whoever the cart narc is will allow me to be the hickory chapter. Yeah, I think you should branch out. Let us take part of his franchise. Yeah, because I'm not going to steal this idea. Well, God, I'd love to do it. I got the glasses with the oh, camera yeah, right in the do. middle. I, I get, could do this. Yep. Like we did Welcome to Walgreens. Yep, you could. I mean, I might get killed. <laughs> Around here we might. I don't want, I don't know if I have the balls to confront people like yeah, that, but i am try at least once. There's a couple areas that we could not do this in. Oh, yeah. We couldn't do it in, uh, you know, I could. No, you don't want Rodeus. <laughs> Rodeus. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Oh, he's still coming. Yeah, he brought it. Sir, I, I, I'm afraid you... This man is trying to... He said he would be violent with me. I don't feel the safe near him. The wants to talk to you. Well, he's, like, okay, he's got a lot of these, too. I'm leaving right now. All right, Alan, that's I, good. I, I, I just want to give everybody a taste of the cart and arc. The hero that is shaming people for not taking their carts back. Yeah, I mean, how many people's carts have... How many cars have been hit by people's carts? Right. I've had one. It's, or, my car's been hit by a car. Yeah. It's not been taken back, so... You know, the, the thing is, people will take a buggy or a cart, um, and they will walk around Walmart for 45 minutes pushing this thing. And then as soon as they get their stuff, they don't want to go another three seconds very, to, a, to a very, corral. Very valid point. So come on, people. Yeah. Don't be a douchebag. Just take it back into the store. Please. Actually. Don't even well, the take it to the corral. Are, you never know where the cart, cart narcs are. <laughs> They'll come for you, my God. They're highly trained. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that, that first one happened in Richardson, Texas. The town's not even that small, and the news was huge. All righty. Um, you know what I like doing when you're here? John's Journal. That's because you love it. Yeah, and I right? also saw it in my uh, email this morning. I knew he was going to do it. Uh, mm-hmm. When did you check the email? After you told me to. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for people at home. How often do you check your email? I just want to know what a general... Okay, because let me, let me explain the etiquette or my thought process, just so you know. So uh, I, early, early for me is 7.30 in the morning, right? 
So if I get up at 7.30 in the morning and I want to get like a message to four people at the same time, it's pretty early for a text. You know, maybe they're still waking up. Maybe they're in bed. It's a pandemic. Maybe they're sleeping in. So I don't want to send a text. So what I do is I'll put in an email and then that way it won't wake them up necessarily. They'll catch it later on in the day. Yeah, I guess that'd be That's my thought if process. You're not hurry. Yeah. If you're in a hurry. It doesn't need to know right now, but right. at some point. But you don't check your email as often as most people. How often do you check your email? Personal email. That, oh, that, I don't know how many emails you, I had you have. You have a personal of, email? Yeah, you have, have a work, work email? <clears throat> You've got the personal. I, I've checked it probably the 1st of April. How many emails do you have? Three. Now, what's the third one? Oh, fantasy football email. Yeah, I've, I've just got three email addresses. Okay. But now, can I please have all of them? No, I'll give you the. I'll give you the good one. How's that? I'll give you the can one you, you really need. Can you give me the one need. that you check? Yes, <laughs> okay. I will give you that one. Okay. The one you sent it to today, I would never have checked if you would have told me to check it. So, right. uh, well, it's fine. You don't have to check it since you're paying my Screen Actors Guild dues. I God, appreciate that. Man. You're a good guy. Well, I got my stimulus check. Well, are you ready for your favorite? Segment. I am. Just take me back. For those of days. you who are just now tuning in to the podcast, I appreciate you stopping by. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. This is a segment um, I, where I read from my high school diary. I found it when I moved back home uh, for two years in high school. I kept a diary, not because I'm that kind of guy, but because the teacher, the English teacher, made me do it. Anyway, I found it. And I thought it'd be funny to read them on the show. What was I thinking at 17, 18 years old? I figured I'd read it on the show and let my friends make fun of me. It's a segment we call <clears throat> John's Journal, John's Journal. This is where I read. <laughs> From a high school journal. Man, since you started the CrossFit, Shoot. you've got another I got some five high. or ten, five or seven seconds what in your color now? is my face? Orange. <laughs> it feels purple red. to me. Yeah, okay. It's on fire. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Here's one from August 29th, 1989. Well, it's Tuesday. That's today, too, mm -hmm. as we record this. Well, it's Tuesday, and what can I say? The only good thing that's happened this week was yesterday's football practice. Everybody seemed to be full of excitement and energy, especially at the end of it where we got to hit somebody as hard as we could. In this drill, the person in front of you would stand there facing you <laughs> with his head down and his hands behind his back. Oh, yeah. Then you would... Get down in a three-point stance about five yards away and just knock his head off. The only bad part was when I had to be the dummy for Steven Schmidt. It didn't feel good to be to get hit by him, but at least I got to take it out on Jason, my little brother, which I thought was great. You remember that drill? I remember that drill. It's <clears throat> so unsafe. And yes. Did they not put a, like a they put a mattress behind us or something? Yeah, to they put a on. mattress yeah. behind us. But you literally stood there with your hands behind hands behind your back, and you you, you looked at the ground and put your chin down. Yeah. You just waited on it. You just took a hit. You couldn't even. You didn't do nothing. You're just a a, 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 a human tackling dummy. What was the purpose of that? That was a Kevin Wilson creation. It was stupid. It, very unsafe. Very stupid. Well, and look I at him now. Yeah. Well, look I don't know what's he doing. He's, He's in and out of jobs all the time. But, yeah, what a yeah. douchebag move. And, by the way, that is why um, Aaron Weaver quit the team my senior year. Our best running back. I was going to say, very good running back. Quit, quit because of that. I remember this huge confrontation happening where I had to tackle him this, this day. Because yeah. we did it more than once. This was just at the very end of uh, – I think that yeah, they would usually been, do them at the end of practice. Yeah. And so he had to play dead while you hit him. Yeah, so Aaron much. had to sit there and take a hit from me. Yeah. And he was not going to do it. And and I, you know, I wasn't going to hold back. I wanted to show Kevin I could hit. Right. Plus, I want to be a star running back. Yeah, you want to play. I want to play. <clears throat> but I hit him hard. And um, he got up and started walking off. And I had to chase Aaron down, like, please don't quit, man. You're, you're the only th hope we have. Yeah. And he quit. So can't blame him. That's because of Kevin Wilson. Douchebag. Stupid. That's Thank a you. Stupid drill, Kevin. Kevin. I mean, is that, would that be even be legal today? No. I don't think of so. Of all the concussions that are going on? Yeah, and I think you got like five yards away. 
So you had to get down three point stance, yeah. five yards. And away so that, and which means you got a good running head start. Yeah, it, it wasn't block. like you were just this and did this. It was like let me run. But they wanted you to put your chin in their chin, like or yeah. your helmet in their chin to yeah. learn how to take a hit or a, or something or you to toughen to you up. Well, who's learning what on this one? Are you I, learning to take a hit, or are you learning how to hit? Well, I think the idea was to learn how, how to, to tackle, yeah. but also to. Okay, in his defense, Kevin Wilson's defense, I think what he was trying to do was toughen up some of our players. Like Aaron was a great running back, but very like shifty and didn't want yeah. to get hit, right? <clears throat> Which is fine. He's a running back. He just right. wants to score a touchdown. But he was trying to toughen us up. I guess he was trying to teach us, like, look, getting hit's not that bad. You have all these pads on. Just know what it feels like and know that you'll get up and be fine. But, you know, it doesn't feel good. No. <laughs> That's it's it's the uh, and it makes people quit. Not cool. Yeah, yeah. your best player quit. So Our obviously let's quit. not do that drill. If you're gonna have yeah. good players quit, what a, that sucks, yeah. man. Who do you remember? Who hit you? No, I can't. I mean, I remember us doing it, but uh, I mean, Kevin, so. But you weren't on the same team as me. Yeah, but I was two years behind you. So, but a lot of times oh, we mixed. We mix practices sometimes. Yeah. we would practice with seniors, and uh, so you were two two years ahead of me. Yeah, because um, one time I did it. I hit Scott Esry. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I was like, okay, I want to call out Scott. So it was. You were at the it was more than one varsity time. against the JV then. Yeah. So, <clears throat> that's not And fair. I hit my brother once. I hit Scott once. Um, hit Aaron once. Yeah. Um, Did they quit too? No, Jason yeah, kept just playing. Just Scott staring. kept playing. They just, yeah. you know, they didn't go on to win many games after that because I'm such a bruiser. Yeah, you hurt everybody. But that's not a good drill. No, not a good drill. Uh, guarantee you that to this day that you're not going to find it. I think there was a name for it. Oh, yeah. I, I wonder what it was. What it was <laughs> I don't. I don't think we're going to be seeing that any. No. In this day and age, with all the concussion. Uh, uh, by the way, it, five feet away, almost social distancing until you hit them. So yeah, maybe during pandemic, it's a good exercise. I wonder if we're even going to have a football season, man. I don't know. What do you think? I don't think. Right now, <laughs> it is April the twenty eighth as we talk. I think we'll have one without fans. Really? Yeah. I, I would so. still watch it. Um, of course, I don't definitely, because there's nothing else. Yeah, but that's gotta be crazy. Man. I don't know. Nobody knows. I mean, baseball's coming up too, so that's really not been talked about. Wait, what are they doing with baseball? Do you know anything well, about they talked this? about moving everybody to one location, which I think it was uh, Arizona, somewhere in Arizona, and putting all the players there and going to different fields and playing without <sighs> fans. Right, so, but every team goes to Arizona and plays the season yeah. there. Yeah, so there's multiple parts. So there's there. no flights. Yeah. There's no and no fans. I don't know. I guess I'd still watch, yeah, it'd but it'd be, okay. be weird. Be weird. Really weird. And Especially I hear a crowd. playoff time whenever you know that's big. You know, mm-hmm. Fans play a big role in that. But yeah, we'll see, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm ready for something to happen. But at well, least we got to watch the draft real quick. Uh, we had a local guy get drafted by the New England New England Patriots. First Give him a round. shout out. What's his name? Uh, Kyle Duggar. Congrats, Kyle University. Duggar. Uh, New England Patriots first pick, 24th, I think. Yeah. yeah. So the, for awesome. those of who people who aren't from Hickory, we have a university here called Lenore Ryan University, and they were very good at football. They were – I mean, they went, like, to the fourth round of the yeah. playoffs yeah. or something like that. Yeah. The Lenore Ryan Bears. And what division are they? What are they, Alan? Do you know – uh, I don't Division know. one, Division one, two, whatever, whatever it is, they're really good. Yeah, and their star player Kyle Duggar got drafted by the New England Patriots. Yeah, so pretty neat. That's huge for us. That's big. Yeah, yeah. very proud. So congratulations. <clears throat> so since you've been trapped at home, are you, what are you watching on TV? Uh, did you watch? And I, I talked about this last time. Open uh, watching um, Last Dance on ESPN. Have oh you, yeah, did you watch that. any of that? Yeah, I've been watching that, and I've got into Schitt's Creek. <laughs> I've been really watching good. that. Finished Ozarks. Um, the Ozarks, yeah, yeah, great, of course. But Shit's Creek's funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting into that. So, and then uh, the Last Dance, of course, Keep really good. The yeah. last two episodes, they did two at once. I mean, they sh- they came out with two episodes. Yeah, one, two, and then three and four. The was three and four Sunday. came out. It was about um, Dennis Rodman, and then the coach. Um, Phil Jackson. 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 Yep. Yeah. Really good. I highly recommend that. If you're looking for something else to watch and you're not a sports person and you're around my age, you'll remember how big the Chicago Bulls were. And this will bring back some memories. <coughs> Plus, I like it anytime they show old footage. Dude, that's. I mean, the, Phil Jackson playing basketball, he, 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 he was a, a hippie. He, he was but, a yeah, hippie. but he was also a bruiser. He was pretty good. Yeah, he was. Big. Yeah, like when he played. 
but he went he, very hippie too. But anyway, it's really good. It's well done docu series. I, I I recommend it. Now, yep. um, did you ever like the Beastie Boys? Yeah, I liked the bit. That was that was they were big in our what our senior year or in the mid nineties. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The first album came out, licensed to Ill. Ill yeah, it was like the number one of the number like top five rap yeah. albums. Yeah. Do you know much about them though? White dudes. Yeah, yeah. white dudes from New York. That's about it. Yeah, Alan, do you know mm. or have you seen what I, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I actually saw the documentary the other day. So yeah. No good. kidding. Oh yeah. A we Boys. didn't even talk about this. It's on Apple TV. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I watched it the night it came out. So Oh wow. Yeah. Let's see. Me, me, and, me and Alan are like besties, I know, dude. Man. We are. We have a lot in common. I did a Star Wars and Beastie Boys double feature. So John, you should have been there, man. God. Awesome. You guys are very nerdy. Oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> oh, this just in though. I did notice that they're coming out with season two of The Mandalorian. Yes, they are. So do you know when that's coming out? I do not. Okay, but I'm excited for it. Yes. Um, what did you think, real quick, without going into too many detail, because I know you're you're working other other things over there. That's did right. you like the Beastie Boys documentary? Yeah, I did. I thought it was really good. I yeah. It was good. It's, uh, you know, I mean, it was them on stage telling their own story. Yeah. And, you know, of course, it's their view of the, their story, but I thought it was really good. It's not what did. I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a straight up documentary, but it really, it's like a like a one man show where they, yeah. they come out and, on stage, the two remaining ones, one of them died, um, to just sort of relive their, their story, their history. And it's pretty, it's pretty cool how they do it. But I was watching it with my mother. Hold on. Which, yeah. a lot of F-bombs, a lot of GDs. She doesn't like that too much. Maybe sure. sex. Was there sex in there, too? Of Not course. Really. Well, Not a whole lot, but there's, you know, there's... Illusions. They, the, the one song, they, they made fun of themselves for, uh, yeah. for their hits. Like the, girl, the song Girls, mm -hmm. to do the dishes, to do the laundry, and in the bathroom. <laughs> so they make fun of that. <laughs> yeah. They made fun of their, uh, their number one hit. Uh, you got to fight for your right to party. That was great. Because that song was a joke to them. Yeah, they wrote it as a big joke. They did? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. They were making wow. fun of, like, frat boy culture. Yeah. Because they're not frat dudes. These guys were punk rockers <laughs> who were, like, outsider skateboard dudes who kind of, like, didn't fit in. So they didn't like the jock frat dudes. And so they thought, well, let, let's, make, let's make fun of them. And that's what that song's about. And oh. then it turned into that 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 the people who liked that were the people they were making fun of. And now that's their audience. And now they're trapped. And they didn't like it. Because really they're like they're more like punk rockers than yeah. anything else. So I did not realize that originally they had a girl in the Beastie Boys. Me either. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I yeah. learned that. There was a yeah, there was a girl in the, in the very beginning, there was four people, and one of them was a girl, and she was a drummer. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She was a drummer. Yep. So, in, anyway, if you, you like the Beastie Boys and you want to know more about them, interesting documentary. I think it's just called Beastie Boys or I think something. It's the Beastie Boys story. Yeah. Yeah. It's on Apple TV. So, check it out. Alan, how are we doing on time, brother? Yeah, we're doing, doing pretty good. We're about an hour 15 or so. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we had a good time in here. Marcus, how do you feel about this episode? I think it went okay. Uh, <laughs> let's review ourselves. Let's, yeah, let's go back and look uh, from the very beginning. Now, what? I'm just kidding. It was a great, good show. I'm trying That's to think if I'm leaving anything out. We opened the package. Yep. Country-ish masks. Mom's eye. Okay. Yeah, we got it all in there. Very good. Listen, um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for stopping by. I would, at this point... This is where I'd tell you to go to my website and check out my tour dates, but nothing really up there except for June 11th, I will be in Tampa, Florida. That's the one gig, that's the next gig I think is going to happen. I'm not really sure um, if it's going to stay. I'm hoping by then everything's back open and we're good. And Where's it at? Tampa, Florida, a comedy yeah. club called Side Splitters. You can drive there if you have to. I could drive there. Yeah, yeah drive totally. There. And then um, we've got the convention center. Hickory, is that oh, still on? Is that still wait, a go? Wait, real quick, Alan. Breaking news. Uh, Comic-Con. Hickory uh, Comic-Con. Oh, it's, it's gone. It's canceled. Yeah, it canceled. Because that was coming up. Yeah. Damn. Did you know they... they I was looking forward to that. Because yeah, you were going to wear a mesh that. shirt like yeah, Hightower. From, yeah, uh, thank God I got out of that. Did you know they canceled Valdez, uh, the outdoor things that they have in Valdez, North Carolina? No. They've already called it off for the summer. What, what do they have? They're like a concert. They oh, have like really? outdoor thingies, yeah. Valdez. For the whole summer? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
That's yeah. it's getting I real. I think we uh, we'll need to talk about the the free show and just make sure, yeah, timing wise, how that's going to work. We out. haven't really talked about it lately because we don't know what's going on. But so far, um, it may or may not happen. June twenty seventh, Hickory Convention Center, free comedy show. If you're a subscriber to the podcast or my YouTube channel, but who knows. But either way, you should go ahead and subscribe because it's free and it helps the podcast. <laughs> so just go <laughs> ahead and do that and be ready in case it does happen. Um, but if you go to uh, if you want to tell people how to watch the podcast, um, my mother and I made an awesome little video watch that. that Alan edited and put together and shot and did everything. Um, and it's very funny. It's cute, but it's also straight up informative. So if you know somebody who might enjoy this podcast, but also is the kind of person who goes, well, wh- I don't understand. I don't know how to get it. What's a podcast? What are you? <laughs> uh, we made a video for them. And if you go to countryishpodcast.com, there is a new, uh, can you hit uh, refresh, Alan? Look at that. How to get a podcast, a new link. Click on that. And there's the video. And you can share that with other people who don't understand what is a podcast or how to get a podcast. I watched that today. It's good. Isn't it cute? You, Alan, you did great. Yeah. And your mom it was good, man. I, I thought it was really informative. Good. So really everything you need is at countryishpodcast.com. You can listen to it straight from there. You can subscribe from there. You can watch it from there. You can learn about us. Everything you need is right there. Please go there and please share it. Um, also, I'm still doing TikToks, having fun doing TikToks. I'm duetting with people. Um, so if you're on TikTok and you lip sync my comedy, I will duet with you. Uh, doing cameos still, cameos, or if you have a personalized message you want me to send somebody as a gift, you know, a wedding anniversary, a birthday, whatever, I will. you write it, I say it, it's on Cameo. Um, one more thing that you could stream if you got Amazon Prime, check out the Ginger Beard Man on Amazon Prime and rate that as well. It's free for Amazon Prime users, and uh, I believe that's pretty much all I got to tell you. Any last words there, Stamos? No, nah. well, let's wrap it up for the Alan Jackson for Marcus Stamos. My name is John Reap. Thank you. And bicycle! Well, a simple kind of life, never did me no harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smartphones and your self park cars. Thank God I'm country ish. Well, I got a podcast, it'll make you giggle. It ain't number one, it's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for country ish. Make a new show every day if I could But my friends have jobs and they pay pretty good Record when we can, work when we should It's time for country Well, I don't care what your skin looks like Just love everybody and we'll be alright Listen to the show every Friday night It's time for country Well, I got a podcast, it'll make you giggle It ain't number one, it's right in the middle My town's not big, but it ain't too little Time for country. What are you still doing here? May the force be with you. Bicycle.